Chairman of the Town Council, Councillor Patrick McNeil and his wife Dawn welcome their guests for the annual civic service held this year at the All Saints Church East Clevedon. The Mayor of Western Super Mayor was amongst the guests. <laughs> Attendance is by invitation only from the Chairman of the Council and is one of the last events he or she will officiate at before ending their year of office. <laughs> Regular guests at this event are Julia Elton and our North Somerset MP, Dr Liam Fox. A fair smattering of councillors were also in attendance. The service is also the occasion for the presentation of Citizens and Personality Awards to selected persons in recognition of their voluntary service to the town of Clevedon. Three rows of pews were reserved for these special people. It's a very difficult task to find the people who to give the award because there are so many in Cleveland to choose from. This is a good town, and a good town is from the people of the town. That makes a good town. So I've chosen five altogether. Four are here today. One, I believe, is uh, camping with the scouts. Where? <laughs> the first one, Ursula, Ursula Marks. Years, um, you've given great support to a great number of people, and in particular the Cleveland Senior Citizens Forum. Thank you very much, Richard. Stuart Edwards. Uh, Stuart set up and helped run. The clearing of the Joe River that runs through the middle of our town and also works with the environment agency to keep it out there. And he's done it since 2003 and still works at it. 
Thank you very much. As Liam Fox reported in last month's Clevedon News, the River Land Yeo flows right through our town. In 2003, the volunteer group Friends of the Land Yeo was formed with the aim of maintaining and enhancing the river, initially by focusing on the removal of debris and foliage along the river banks. The group's responsibility ends here at the Environment Agency's maintained outfall at the Pill. The river enters Clevedon from the Tickenham direction by flowing through a culvert under the M5 motorway near Clevedon Court. And it was here that we arranged to meet the chairman of the group, Stuart Edwards, who was also one of the founders of the Friends of Lanyo ten years ago. The Lanyo Friends are mainly concerned with a section of the river that runs from the motorway here through the town to Clevedon Pill. But it was on this side of the motorway, the Tickenham side, that major changes were made to the water courses that affected the flow of water going through the town uh, and into the pill. It is probably difficult for most people to appreciate how, prior to 2003, when the Lanjo Friends were formed, the river through the town had become so badly neglected. Rubbish had accumulated in the river and culverts. A large willow tree was growing in the centre of the channel, not far from the Chinese restaurant and a build-up of silt had occurred up to a foot deep in places. Our aims were to try and reverse this trend and improve the flow through the town. I'm st stood in front of the Langeo, the normal course, natural course of the Langeo River. It's flowing to me from that direction, from Tickenham, and goes behind me down here where it passes through culverts under the motorway. Prior to the construction of the motorway, another channel was created, which is off to my right, 
This is called the Yearling Ditch. Uh, this channel was put in place to bypass water after heavy rain from the Landjo into the Blindjo, which is a mile to the south. Um, I've now stood over the Yearling Ditch and looking back in the direction of the Landjo uh, and in this direction to the Blindjo, which is about three quarters of a mile away from here. The tilting weir is controlled by a wind which is attached to it by a wire. When the level changes, the winch operates and can control the weir, lift or lower it, to regulate the water level. This is all achieved by automatic control. If this did not exist, all the water in the Lanjo would drain into the Blindjo. If after heavy rain the level in the Lanjo rises, the weir will automatically lower itself to return the river to its summer or winter level setting. In the summer, from April to 1st, the level is higher to raise the water table on the farm line. From December to 1st, it is lowered to improve drainage. This goes some way to explain why water levels and flow are usually lower during the winter months through the town. It is now increasingly recognised all water courses need to be maintained to reduce the risk of flooding. Because of the high ground to the north of the river, where it flows through the town, the lower part of Clevedon could be at risk from surface water runoff. Following torrential rain, such an event occurred in Portis Head a few years ago. There's a fish in here. Really? Well, yeah, I can see them. The Landjo runs mostly parallel to Old Street and Old Church Road. These roads form a boundary between Lower Clevedon and the higher ground to the north. In the last 10 years, there has been an increase in extreme weather events and flash flooding. If a Boscastle type event were to occur in our area, the Landjo would have a very important part to play in reducing the risk of flooding. Thanks to the Landjo friends, I am pleased to say the water course through the town is now in much better condition than it was in 2003. The purpose of the annual meeting is for councillors to hear the views of the members of the public and for the elected members to answer their critics. But the question has to be asked on this occasion, where were these critics? The assembled gathering consisted of 14 councillors, two council employees, three members of the press and the wife of one of the chairmen. The only voices heard during the 20-minute meeting were the committee chairs acknowledging that the printed reports of their particular committee were an accurate account of the year's deliberations. Finally, it fell to Councillor Shoplin to make a suggestion for the future meetings and to sum up the success of the evening. As a long-suffering ratepayer neglector, can I suggest or ask the Council that if in the future it's such a meeting as this, that they might consider it holding it on the coldest and wettest night in the spring when people will come in to get warm 
This is not a great success, except we had a very peaceful ride and no one's bothered us and we can feel how well we've done, but where are the public? I don't know, but perhaps we should have to try something else. So can I put it out of the council in their deliberations as an elector and repair? Thank you, Mr Chair. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that concludes the business for this evening and I can the meeting closed. Thank you all. Since the foundations for this boathouse extension to the sailing club headquarters on the beach were laid last year, nothing has happened. Then suddenly, during this month, this framework has appeared. The plan is for a small boat store for three sailing yachts with a sun lounge area above with access to and from the first floor bar in the existing clubhouse. It's always sad to see a bus service disappearing and the sudden unexpected demise of the pier buses X7 service from Six Ways to Temple Mead Station was no exception. Pier buses were set up by Sean Craigie in March of last year and had run three cream and green single deckers ever since. Passengers are now left with the half hourly first X6 service direct to Bristol bus station and the hourly X8 service that also goes to the bus station but via Nailsey and Backwood. It was always this view from the Marine Parade that would count against any planner who wanted to build on this plot, at present occupied by just one bungalow hidden way down on the lower rocks. And this plan to build these nine four-storey townhouses, which as can be seen would totally obliterate the view, was just too much for many people living in the town. The town council opposed a proposed development and following objections citing the lack of vehicular access to the site and that the development was out of character with the surrounding area, a meeting of the North Somerset Council's North Area Planning Committee also decided the application should be refused. The final decision lies with the council's planning and regulatory committee which next meets at the end of the month.
The idea to invite children from the local primary schools and preschool facilities to go for a toddle around the Salthouse Fields was that of the Cleveland Lions president, Sue Miller, who enlisted the help of not only her own club members, but members from other local Lions club, and of course, their beloved mascot Lions, who are so liked by the children. Just over 50 children took part in the toddle, with parents and siblings tagging on behind. OK, this wasn't anything like the real marathon, which just happened to be taking place up in London at the same time, but winners were certainly in the making here, and maybe records were being established even at this young age. All the monies raised went to the schools who took part. It was not a large amount, but the Cleveland Lions Club were happy that they were able to raise awareness for their club in the community, particularly emphasising their work with young people. Your flags will be replaced by Easter, was the promise from the North Somerset Council when asked what they planned to do about the tatty flags hanging above our promenade. And true to their word, a contractor arrived on Maundy Thursday to undertake the work although this flag does seem to have been missed. As with last year, the flags had to be hung using a cherry picker to gain access to the fixing points. There is no provision within the flagpole to hoist the new flags up the pole by rope. Counting from the pier, the flags represent the four countries comprising the United Kingdom. 
England, Scotland, well for now anyway, no, Wales, no. and hang on, no. since when has Ireland been part of the UK? From the sea, the last eight flags spell out the name of our town to mariners who may be lost at sea using the International Maritime Signals flags. Charlie? Lima? Echo? Victor? Echo. Delta. Oscar. And finally, November. <laughs>